Hi, I am Prerna from Telecoma Technologies and today uh, we are here to discuss about the planning of the 3G networks. So uh, we need to plan a network before actually deploying it physically. So that means uh, there are various important factors which should be taken into consideration while deploying a new network. So planning of a network basically includes various phases like pre-planning of the network after that we move towards the requirement analysis network simulation, survey, and the detailed planning of the network. So if we begin with like the pre-planning of the network, so this is the phase of the planning of a network which is actually uh, carried out uh, before the detailed planning of a particular network. That means we are here to check of the basic dimensioning of the network according to the coverage and the capacity. Because when we are going to plan a new network, coverage and capacities are the two important factors that should be taken into consideration. That means if we are going to deploy a 3G network, in a particular area so that network or we can say that the node bees which we are going to deploy there they should cover the area properly and handle the traffic capacity in a good manner so that means the dimensioning of a network is very essential when we are going to plan a network now after that we move towards the next step which is the requirement analysis that means uh, we can have the survey of the pre existing uh, sites on the basis of which we can uh, deduce the information that what are the various new things which are required or what are the things which can be eliminated for the system. After that the network simulation all of these tools are carried together. Now after that we have the survey and the detailed planning. So survey basically includes a very important factor in the planning which is the site survey and the site selection that means a proper area should be chosen to deploy the 3g network or 3g site after that the detailed planning is carried out in which the different parameters like the frequency planning the coverage and the capacity planning are taken into considerations. More importantly, in the planning of 3G networks, the code planning is very essential and a critical issues. Because we know that our 3G systems are like based on WCDMS system, which is a coding based technique. So that means here we have to plan the codes very efficiently. So uh, like first of all, we'll just discuss about the site survey and the selection of the site. That what are the requirements and what are the factors that should be taken into mind when we're going to deploy a new 3G network. So here we are with the site survey and selection of the site. So uh, this also includes a various number of addresses that should be issued like how uh, you should select a suitable site for your network. Like we can say that the screening is done on the basis of geographical conditions 
the radio network surroundings or the existing resources so that means uh, first of all when we are going to deploy a site we have to select or we have to see that in which kind of area we are going to deploy our site whether your area is an urban area it is sub urban area or an open area so according to that the various uh, deployment process is then carried out so that means first of all we have to decide the area or we have to decide the planning of that particular area to cover it effectively so we can say that uh, first of all we will cover the primary area because if the area is densely populated for example if it's a market area or if it's like a street area so that means you need to plan a more number of sites or we need to plan that site at the more traffic concentrated point so that means the first important goal is to cover those primary areas after that we can move to secondary area coverages we can say that uh, like our indoor coverage because indoor coverage is as much as that important as our outdoor coverages because most of the users these days are residing inside so that means it's a very important issue to handle the indoor coverage solutions in the planning issues now after that we have to uh, check other parameters like when we are going to deploy a site and we are going to place an antenna over there so we have to check that uh, there are no obstructions in the front of the main lobe of the antennas because if there are uh, obstructions in the front of the antennas it will create uh, the coverage related issues so that means we have to plan these issues in a manner that there is no coverage holes or dead zones so that means the height of antenna should be also taken into considerations because these are the uh, issues which are ultimately going uh, to decide the performance of the network so another issue is like that we should not deploy our sites in the areas uh, near to like some radar stations or ground satellite stations because it can create interference moreover if you are going to deploy like dmts or 3g 2100 megahertz system so there should be a large vertical separation from another system like if we have gsm 1800 so there should be a vertical separation between these two systems in order to avoid the co system interference and uh, we can say that another issue which is important uh, we can take the existing system as a reference model because that provides a uh, that is very helpful when we are going to deploy a new network because we can exploit the resources like tower and the transmission technologies effectively from our transmission paths so that means we have to uh, select our site by keeping all these parameters in the mind so after that now if we move towards the detailed planning concepts so we have a number of issues which needs to be addressed when planning a network like the frequency planning coverage and capacity planning link budget propagation model scrambling code planning which is a very important issue in the 3g network planning so if we talk about the frequency planning so uh, in our 3g systems as we know that this is a wcdma based concept so all the cells will be sharing the same frequency but still the frequency is divided among the various 
operators. And then when we go to divide the network, we have to decide whether it is a TDD based system or an FDD based system that is frequency division duplexing or the time division duplexing. Mostly FDD based 3D systems are deployed. Now, coverage and capacity are the two important issues which needs to be uh, addressed when going to plan a network. So that means the node B deployment should take care of its effective area, which is it's going to cut and the amount of traffic it is going to handle. The next thing which we have is like the propagation models and the link budget. So if you talk about propagation model, uh, model, so this is basically a mathematical formulation which basically describes the characteristics of the radio wave through a path. So for the deployment of a network, it is important that a good propagation model is selected. Like mostly we prefer is the Okamura Hata model. Link budget. Now when we are planning, we are calculating the link budget for our uplink direction also and for our downlink direction also. That is our reverse and forward links. So link budget is basically the calculation of all the losses which occur from the transmitter to the receiver. Now these losses are basically the penetration losses, the vehicle losses, the body losses, the feature and the cable losses. So all of that is calculated and then it is assumed that the uplink budget that is from our base station to the user or from use to the base station, this should be approximately near to equal. So there is a, a particular value for our link budget which should be maintained in order to provide the effective communication. So there should be a reasonable distribution of these nodes or of a site so that there is an effective coverage. Like We have like different sectors. So they should cover the areas effectively. But sometimes we can have an unreasonable distribution in our network also. So this is basically unreasonable distribution which can ultimately create some dead zones or curves holes so that ultimately affect the efficiency of the system. So the, another parameter which is required to keep in mind when planning uh, 3G net is the code plan. This is a very important issue. As we know that our 3G system is based on codes because uh, we have the same frequency and the time. That means the user are accessing the same frequency and simultaneously. So, so the parameters or the criteria which is used to distinguish the user is the code. So that means each user in the 3G network has its own code on the basis of which it is distinguished. So uh, basically there are two different kinds of codes which are employed here. That is our Generalization codes and the scrambling codes. So the planning of the standardization codes is not uh, required because this is uh, carried out by the radio network role. So the main primary issue here is to plan the scrambling codes. So these scrambling codes are basically used to distinguish the various transmitters. That is, if I talk about 
by downwind direction, so it will be separating the various node B transmitters. If I talk about uplink, it will be distinguishing the various user equipments. So for uplink direction, this code allocated by the network automatically as the call begins. So that means we have planned downlink scrambling codes. Now why do we need to plan these codes? We need to plan these codes because there should not be an interference of these codes because if the user or the user equipment is not able to distinguish between the codes, it will create a pilot pollution in the system. That means if identical codes are being transmitted, so the respective user equipment will not be able Able to distinguish that uh, which is it serving base station. So that's why we need to plan the scrambling codes over here. So we have, as per 3 gpd specifications, 512 uh, secondary codes. So we have different Different sectors, so each of them will have a different scrambling code. So that means each of that site will be distinguished. Like we have the scrambling code, this it could have this, and it could have this. So they will be distinguished on the basis of this. So 512 scrambling codes are basically divided into 64 code groups 0 to 63 each having 8 so planning of codes is carried out so that we are able to uh, distinguish between the various transmitters and each uh, cell is allocated a different code so this is main issue in the planning of network because the system of a 3g system is totally based on codes so the fundamental issue which we need to take care of is the planning of these codes. So if the plan of the network is carried out phase by phase, step by step, so it leads to and the deployment of an efficient network. So this is all uh, for the overview of the 3G network planning. Thank you.